Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. MBG here today with a closer look at the new Harlequin Codex. And not just any Harlequin Codex. This is the Harlequin Collector set, fresh off the, uh, the boats out there in uh, Long Beach, I guess, finally made its way into uh, Games Workshop and shipped out only a couple weeks late. But that's okay. We'll, we'll take it because... You know, to be honest, hey, uh, that's uh, no harm, no foul on their part, in my opinion. So, this is a pretty cool stat set. It was, um, I guess it was like 900 of them, and immediately sold out when they went, became available, uh, I guess, three or four weeks ago, when the Harlequin release hit. And it consists of uh, three volumes. You got the Gifts of Shagarak, which is uh, basically the um, where, it, where it gives you all the, the cards and the little uh, acry acrylic tokens. Uh, markers, uh, objective markers rather, and as well as the tactical cards themselves. And then you got Codex Harlequins, no, no uh, explanation necessary there. And the Warriors of the Laughing God, which is basically a review of the top three, I guess, uh, masked troops out there. And also the Painting God, which is pretty much like half of the book. Very cool stuff. I mean, it comes uh, expertly, you know, bound in this really sweet... Um, hardcover slipcase, it's got foil trim, you know, full bleed photography, very cool stuff on it. This is number 631 of 900, and uh, let's take a closer look at it. So first up, we have the Warriors of the Laughing God. Let's zoom in there a little bit. Okay, so here it is. We've got the contents. Like I said, it's basically a showcase of the most meaningful, I guess, um, uh, troops and kind of like some background on them and some different things like that. Then you get into the painting guide, which gives you great tips for painting these guys. I mean, let's face it, all, all the different detail and paint styles on these guys, every little tip helps. And then you've got the catalog in the back, which is kind of like an homage to what they used to do back in the day in the old uh, codexes and things like that, where they would show you all the models for a particular faction. Now granted, it was only like on the sprue or unpainted pewter bits, just so you could see everything, but you know, Back then, that was definitely good enough because nobody could ever see all this stuff in one place at one time. But now we have these beautiful painted miniatures, and the hobby is even better, in my opinion. So, like I said, awesome looking graphics, very well laid out. You got a lot of background and different things on some of the some of the basic troops, uh, and then some of the different um, uh, units in the game as well that are you know are specific, like the uh, the Death Jesters and some of the Shadow Seers. Now. It's uh, it's really nicely done. You got this uh, gold foil trim on the end of the pages as well, and I can't tell you if it's real gold, but it's definitely gold-like. And then you get into the back here where it's got the painting guide, and like I said, pretty pretty awesome stuff. It goes, it pretty much runs the gamut from shading black to uh, armor uh, to armored patterns and all sorts of different gems, specific details, diamond patterns, doing yellow, doing the masks. Then it gets into the vehicles themselves and all the different markings. And there was a really good one here of the Sky Reaver I wanted to show you because it's really the one that I think was featured the most, the picture at least, or the model of the picture, definitely on the on the um, the box even, and a lot of the stuff featured from Games Workshop. But like I said, I mean, it's just, there's so much stuff in here. I mean, you got all these different patterns. I mean, you could use this stuff for regular Eldar. You could use this stuff for, shoot, um, you know, uh, Tau, even here it is right here. This is a really cool paint scheme. Uh, it kind of shows you where they line it and then the colors they use. Obviously, they're uh, they're doing they're, their brush strokes are really good because they're not getting here in this black or they clean it up before they take the picture or whichever. But still, either way, it looks really great. And this was you know this was really the one that I thought looked great out of all the out of all of the um the the paint schemes featured. And then of course you can do the same thing on the jet bikes as well. So. Uh, if you're in, really into Harlequins, you might want to pick this one up or try to find it online somewhere because, you know, um, like eBay, I'm sure there's some people selling them because there's some amazing looking paint schemes in here. And then it gets into the basing too because let's face it, the model's not done until it's based, guys. <laughs> and then like I said, in the back here, you got the catalog, kind of the homage to what they used to show back in the day and it shows all the units that are available. And then they try to pair it with Dark Elder again, which was kind of weird because... They did that in the main book as well. So I thought that was kind of interesting how they keep trying to push Dark Eldar and not actual Eldar uh, on everybody here. So here is the, um, the Codex Harlequin itself. And like I said, very well done, nicely laid out. You got this embossed cover here. Then it gets into the actual book itself. Now, I haven't seen the actual Eldar 
Harlequin Codex because, like I said, the whole like beach strike and things like that, or Los Angeles port strike. But I'm going to assume, for the most part, a lot of times what happens is that they do um, they do a different layout on the top, like they'll do it dark instead of light for the collector's edition. So I'm hoping that's kind of what the case is here because um, this looks very well laid out, in my opinion. I mean, there's just all the colors. It's very beautiful, you know, from a visualistic standpoint. It's just all the, all the trim and all the stuff like this. You know, we didn't have stuff like this back in the 90s when a lot of the original codexes were coming out. Um, I mean, shoot, I don't even think they were doing that stuff on computers back then. You know, it was all like, you know, creative, creative writing and front page design and things. And you just don't see stuff like that anymore. But I mean, boom, look at that. You know, this, this R was spectacular. You know, I bought the EPUB version and to, just because so I could have the rules and check them out and everything. But, you know, the EPUB... The, having the actual book in your hands with all this artwork, it's just, there's no substitute for it, in my opinion. Like, this just, this stuff's spectacular. Like, I, I have to have the books. <laughs> I have to, have to, have to have the books. So, then we get into the actual forces, and I've reviewed all this already. You know, we kind of saw kind of how it all was, but to see it actually laid out, you know, in, in actual color. I mean, look at this. L look at this layout. I mean, the, the shading, the top here, all the typesetting, you know, the actual colors of the pit. I mean, it's just, it's just... You can't really see anything about it. Like it's, it. You can't compare it to anything. This hopefully is not, you know, super over the top. Way different from the regular Codex version. And I'm sure a lot of you out there have the regular Codex already and can definitely, um, you know, let us know if it's pretty much the same layout. Now, granted, it might not have like the foil, you know, the foil page leafing, but it's, um, it's very well done nonetheless. I mean, this is. Uh, I'd love to see an actual Eldar book you know, come out this year, because I think they do need to be redone, and maybe that's why they're trying to push the whole, um, hey, maybe if you like this, pick up the Dark Eldar book, because that just came out, and, you know, maybe we will see an Eldar uh, book, with the whole, like, Hollow Field entry in here, being exactly the same fluff, but different rules, I definitely would say that the chances are high that we'll see something like that in the near future. So, here's the gifts of Shagrak. Um, very cool stuff, like I said. Uh, you've got the tactical cards here, which are the basic 36 cards, and the new, uh, I think it's the new 6 cards, so that puts it up to like 42 uh, different tactical objectives. Now, I'm not sure because I didn't, I didn't get the, uh, the data card set, but you know, this is very well done. Got some UV coating here, some foil leaf uh, kind of trim. I, like I said, I don't, I'm not able to compare this to the actual data, data cards uh, that came out, but they seem um, very well done. I mean, normally they have the kind of kind of the same. Um, what is it? Kind of the same. Um, uh, the striping here, I guess the pin striping, and pretty much the same uh, top and bottom. So I'm not sure that they're that much different than what you would get in the, in the normal set. But they, you know, they kind of come in this nice little box, and they have their their own place here in the um, the collector set itself. And then you get into uh, the actual cards, where you're going to have probably the, um, what is it, the Phantas Phantasmy, <laughs> say that ten times fast, as well as the other psychic powers that they can take, um, Demonology Santic, of course, being one of them, curiously. So here they are, you got the uh, Phant uh, Phantasmy, Phantas Phantasmancy, I don't know, we'll go with that. Here's all of those, you got all six of those, the new powers. Um, and of course the Primaris, which is the Veil of Tears, and Telepathy, and Santic as well. So, you know, like I said in some of my reviews, it's interesting that they get the Telepathy one because that's got all that Neg leadership and Neg morale. Um, I guess, um, um, what is it, not blessings, but the other thing. <laughs> Man, it's way too early in the morning, I guess, for me. Um, but it's it almost seems like they wanted that to combo. Now, there's a lot of tournament players out there saying, hey, these guys can't hold up. They can't hold up an assault. They can't do this and they can't do that. And, you know, it's kind of unfortunate to see. I would love to go to Adepticon this year personally and see a ton of these armies on the table, you know, all done up with all the, you know, chevrons and diamonds and the whole nine, all the ribbons, you know, stuff jumping around, ninja kick flipping, you know, chaos and the nads. But, I, you know, I really want to see that. And I hope we see that. But I think what we're going to see more of I think we're going to see more of this being actual for uh, allied as far as competitive play. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't not collect a, a Harlequin army because, oh, my God, they're not competitive and I could never play. Dude, play them at your local store. Play them in smaller events. 
Play them in escalation leagues. Play them because you want to and you want to try something different. Maybe they won't be super competitive. You won't win a ton of tournaments, so it's not an auto-win button. But that doesn't mean that they're not cool and they're not deserving of your hobby attention. These are the um, the little, you know, I hope it's um, make it easier for you guys to see this. But, ugh, Armulus, ooh, that's top secret. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> so these are, like, some really cool acrylic tokens here. Let me zoom in on them. Okay, so here they are. Kind of zoom in on it there and kind of pull it off so you can kind of see. So it's nice, transparent, clear acrylic token where it's got the rune, um, the Harlequin rune, or two, part, part of this actually forms the uh, rune of Slanesh, actually. And then you've got the number because there's uh, six of them here. And then it's just it's just pretty cool. I mean, I granted, I'm not sure that you could see it that well on the tabletop. At least some some tabletops. I mean, this is the um, uh, this is the fat mats from. Uh, table war designs and obviously you can tell they are very well detailed I mean look at that that awesome graphics but you can't really see these on it too well so maybe uh, maybe not for some of the stuff like this but they're still pretty neat I mean you can put these on tabletops you could I mean shoot you could just spray paint them white on the bottom and then they would always show up but it wouldn't be quite so see-through but um, make sure if you do something like that that you uh, matte coat it so they don't um, uh, kind of scrape off and things like that and ruin uh, ruin your nice little uh, storage uh, store spot here this is all like some squishy kind of foam kind of thing here that you put them back into so uh, really nice stuff I mean this is a very very well done um, codex offering collector's edition offering in my opinion and I'm you know I'm super stoked by it I think uh, I think Harlequins are one of those things that they've had so much rich history out there that uh, it's you know, it's really cool to see such a, such a cool offering done up so well by Games Workshop. You know, they took a lot of heat for the Blood Angels collector set, in my opinion, not having, you know, the cool um, objective tokens and things like that. And they really have kind of um, gone over the top, in my opinion, in the uh, with the, um, the Necron one as well as the Harlequin book. So hopefully we will see way more cool stuff from them. Uh, nobody really knows what's next. A lot of people are saying Plastic Chorus Heresy and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, only time will tell. So definitely make sure make this your hobby. If you love Harlequins, paint up some Harlequins. Put them on a the tabletop. Show everybody you know your hobby prowess. Or you know just uh, you know just ally them in if you're trying to do a little bit competitive. Uh, competitive stuff that's great too so hopefully that those are some words for wisdom guys I'd really hate to see such awesome looking models with such cool background and rich history um, just kinda like universally panned by by the uh, by the hobby so it's just, uh, it's just very unfortunate so maybe I'll do a little thing where I try to make something a little competitive out of them and uh, see what we can do there here in the future of course after Adepticon because Adepticon is coming up here soon hopefully I can get this video together and out to you guys uh, before then so that's about it for this one guys thanks for hanging in there make sure you if you haven't already subscribe to this YouTube channel check out the blog spikybitsblog.com and also check out our new YouTube channel that where the battle reports live it's the long war and you can definitely click on the link up there in the screen as well